subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. So I recorded this video earlier and I've had this problem on previous videos. I'm not sure why uh, my microphone settings get messed up, but um, there was no audio. So what I'm doing here is basically using the footage uh, that I had when I was actually working out the problems. And I'm just gonna kinda talk over it so that way you still get a little bit of an explanation. Uh, it might not match up perfectly here, um, but uh, it's better than nothing, I think. So on this homework, we are trying to find limits as x approaches infinity. And the general, um, the general gist here is that um, you want to be looking at both uh, uh, the numerator and the denominator if you've got a rational function here and compare the degrees of both the numerator and the denominator. Now, as we'll see in future problems here, um, you, you won't necessarily have a polynomial. You might have some exponential functions uh, on the numerator and the denominator, uh, and so we'll have to compare those as well. But for number one, uh, it's just a regular old rational function, and we see that the degree on top is larger than the degree on the bottom. Um, and so as x approaches infinity, the value of the function will be going up to infinity. If number one said x approaches negative infinity, it would be approaching negative infinity. The number six is a little bit different, and I'm going to kind of go out of order here uh, because it's just going to be easier to kind of go from left to right and then down, uh, then trying to go down and then scroll back up. I just think it'll it'll look better visually. Uh, but anyway, for number six, we've got some x. We got an exponential term here, that three e to the x. And what we talked about in uh, the notes is that whenever you have e to the x, as x approaches negative infinity, the value of e to the x goes to zero. And as x approaches positive infinity, e to the x goes to infinity. So it really is important for you to note whether x is approaching positive or negative infinity here. And in this problem, x is approaching negative infinity. So that means the value of e to the x, it's approaching zero. So we can basically just ignore that term uh, because that whole term is getting closer and closer to zero and instead examine the terms that have a degree four. So those are going to be the largest degrees of, uh, of any of the other terms because really the only other one is 32 and that's a constant. So as x approaches negative infinity, um, if you've got a rational function where the degrees are the same, you will compare the leading coefficients here of both the numerator and the denominator and write it as a ratio. So since the, the coefficients there are two and four, uh, the limit is going to approach one half. Now for number 11, um, we've got the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x times x to the 10th. So as we talked about before, that e to the x is gonna approach zero as x goes to negative infinity. So that means that um, you know that term, that e to the x, is just going to get closer and closer to zero. And as that gets closer and closer to zero, zero times anything is going to get closer and closer to zero. So the limit, as um, you know, that that e to the x times x to the tenth gets closer to negative infinity, or as x sorry, as x goes to negative infinity, the value of that whole expression is going to get closer to zero because we're going to get closer and closer to multiplying by zero. So it doesn't really, that x to the 10th is sort of irrelevant. That could be any number um, or really any expression, um, and it would still go to zero. Um, so I'm just letting the video catch up here. Uh, yeah, negative 11 should be equal zero. For number two here, uh, notice how we've got a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator both with the same degree. And so the horizontal asymptote will be equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. So whether x is approaching positive infinity or negative infinity, the value of the function is gonna be approaching the same number, which is that horizontal asymptote, um, which is the coefficient of both the lead, or, or, I'm sorry, the leading coefficient of both the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, it'd be two over three. For number seven, uh, we have a couple exponential uh, expre uh, terms here. We've got three to the x and e to the x, which are going to outrun, so to speak, all the other terms. They're going to have a faster increase as x goes to infinity. But as x goes to negative infinity, these exponential functions don't go 
um, don't increase or decrease without bound. Instead, they go to zero. So e to the x goes to zero, 3 to the x goes to zero. Um, so we really want to look at the other terms at that point to see what's going to happen. And in this case, the denominator has the larger degree. So that means the denominator is going to um, increase more quickly than the numerator. So the horizontal asymptote for this function is going to be y equals zero. So the limit as x approaches infinity is going to be zero on this one. For number 12, um, we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And so you want to look at all the terms here. So first I'm looking at the terms in the numerator. Uh, they're all basically just have a polynomial up at the top. And we also have a polynomial on the bottom. Uh, they are both fourth degree polynomials. So when the degrees are the same, uh, you are going to compare the leading coefficients of both the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator has a, co a leading coefficient of 12, and the denominator has a leading coefficient of 2. So the horizontal asymptote would be y equals 12 over 2, uh, which when you divide that out, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the, uh, the limit as x approaches negative infinity, um, in this case, would be equal to x equals infinity. When you have these horizontal asymptotes uh, for rational functions, it does approach the same number, um, whether you're going positive or negative infinity. So um, yeah, that one's just, that one should equal six. For number three, uh, this is another one where we have a couple of exponential terms, but in this, in this problem, x is approaching positive infinity instead of negative infinity. So that means that the fastest growing terms are gonna be these exponential terms. So they'll, they'll fastly outpace any of those, uh, uh, like the x to the 99 or the x squared ones. So you wanna compare these two, the, uh, the e to the x, the 3 to the x, and um, to decide which one is gonna increase more quickly, uh, you have to look at the bases of those terms, um, three and Euler's number e, and whichever one is larger will, will grow more quickly. So if the numerator grows more quickly, then you know we're, we're, uh, the limit will just be infinity. But if uh, the denominator grows more quickly, then uh, the uh, then we'll have a then it'll then it'll approach zero. So since three is bigger than e, that means in this case the numerator is going to grow more quickly. And when the numerator grows more quickly, then the, um, the function is just going to go off to infinity. So we say that the limit as x approaches infinity is just infinity. For number eight, another one where we have uh, those exponential terms with this, in this case, x is approaching negative infinity. So when x approaches negative infinity, um, these exponential terms are going to go to zero. So we can kind of ignore them and just look at the remaining uh, polynomial terms. On top, we've got a degree 6, and on bottom, we've got a degree 5. When the degree on top is larger than the degree on bottom, that means that uh, the numerator will increase more quickly than the denominator as x approaches infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, uh, it's, it'll have sort of the same behavior, but, um, but it'll be negative. So as x approaches negative infinity, the value of this function should also approach negative infinity. Number 13 has the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. This is just your parent rational function and the denominator is just gonna keep getting bigger while the numerator stays one. So if you think about fractions like one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five, the values of each of those fractions is decreasing with a limit of zero. So when the denominator increases faster than the numerator, the limit uh, as x approaches infinity is just going to be zero. All right, so uh, let's take a look at number four here. So here we've got x to the one-third over the square root of x. Now, anytime you see the square root of x or any kind of root of x, whether it's square root, cube root, or whatever, uh, please rewrite it 
as x to a rational exponent, in this case the square root of x is x to the 1 half. Getting in this habit, and I know this is something I've repeated before, is going to really help you out next year in calculus. Um, and it helps here too because what we need to do is compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator and if we rewrite square root of x as x to the one-half, it can help us make that comparison a little bit easier because one-half is bigger than one-third. So in this, uh, in this expression, the denominator has the larger degree, and so the value of the function is going to approach zero. In other words, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So the limit as x approaches infinity is just zero. For number of 9, we've got a 5 minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the only thing that's going to be changing for x is that x and the x squared. As that goes to negative infinity and we square that, that expression will actually be going to positive infinity. So what we'll have is 5 minus 1 over 1 essentially plus infinity. When you have this really large denominator and the numerator is just 1, the entirety of that fraction is just going to approach zero. Okay, so basically we've got 5 minus 1 over 1 plus infinity, right? And, uh, well, it, it, anyways, that's what it's approaching. Um, and so whenever the denominator is approaching infinity and the numerator is not, um, then the fraction as a whole is going to approach zero. So this expression is going to approach 5 minus 0, which is just 5. So we can say that the limit as x approaches negative infinity is 5. For number 14, we've got x over the natural log of x. And in the notes, and I encourage you to go back and review those um, if, if you've forgotten about these relative rates of change, um, but a polynomial function is going to grow faster than a logarithmic one. Okay, so there's an order to, you know, how fast these different kinds of functions grow. Like, for instance, an exponential function will grow faster than an, a polynomial, but a polynomial will grow faster than a logarithmic. So you can kind of consider this to be sort of a bigger on top scenario where the numerator is growing at a faster rate, and so the, uh, the limit to that one is infinity. For number five, we just have a regular old rational function here with a degree on bottom that's bigger, so it's growing faster in the denominator. And any time that happens, we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, so that's going to be what the limit equals. Number 10 is just another rational function, no exponential logarithmic, and nothing really funny happening here. Um, so we have a fifth degree polynomial on top and a fourth degree polynomial on the bottom. Since the degree on top is bigger, then um, this will grow without bound. Now, if, as x goes to the right, this is going to have a positive, this is going to uh, basically go to positive infinity. But as we go to the left, it's going to go to negative infinity. So the limit here will equal negative infinity. For number 15, we've got the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of this crazy looking <laughs> expression on the inside of the parentheses there. We've got a polynomial with a leading coefficient of 2 pi up top, and then we have a, a quadratic polynomial on the bottom. So just like with that cosine problem and with the 5 minus problem, uh, let's try to see where the, the expression, uh, not the entire thing, we don't have to calculate it all at once, but figure out where that expression inside the parentheses is getting closer to as x approaches infinity. So the numerator and the denominator of that rational expression uh, both have the same degree, right? They're both x squared. So if, if the problem was just x, uh, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of that rational function, we would examine the leading coefficients of the numerator and denominator and, uh, and report back the, uh, the ratio of those. So it would be like 2 pi over 3, essentially. Uh, that's where the horizontal asymptote would be if we didn't have the sign piece to it. So that expression inside the parentheses as x approaches infinity will approach 2 pi over 3, which is the ratio of the leading coefficients. And so at that point we just need to evaluate sine of 2 pi over 3, which, um, you know, this again is going to be a value that you get from your unit circle. So make sure you're reviewing that. 
Um, I think I think I pull it up here in a second, um, just so you can see. You know, it's that way in, in case you don't have it ready to go. There it is. Um, you can see that uh, at 2 pi over 3, the y value, which is how we uh, evaluate the sine function, is root 3 over 2. So the value of this limit as x approaches infinity is root 3 over 2. Number 16 is going to be work similarly. Um, in fact, it's a very, is it the same problem? Hold up, 2x squared. Okay, so it's just barely different. Is that? Yeah, so in this case, um, the denominator of that expression uh, has a larger degree than the numerator. It's a cubic underneath, and on the top we've got a quadratic. So since the degree of the denominator of that expression inside the parentheses is negative, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, since the uh, degree of the uh, expression is, is uh, larger than the degree of the numerator, then that expression is going to approach zero. Okay, it's like having a, y, uh, a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So since that expression on the inside of the parentheses is getting closer to zero, we can evaluate this by just finding sine of zero, which I know the unit circle just popped up and went away real quick. Hopefully you have one, or this might just be a value you have memorized. Um, it's just going to approach zero. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.